This is professional Peter Avalon, and you're listening to Sports Guys Talking Wrestling. When they're not covering the sports world, they're talking about the world of professional wrestling. It's Sports Guys Talking Wrestling. Now with Justin Simmons, here's Stu Myrick. Sports Guys Talking Wrestling on the horn. Stu Myrick, Justin the Smash Simmons. Both of us coming off long weekends. Um, oh, yeah. I, I I feel Seth Rollins whenever he tweets out, I hate football. Because Saturday, I was ready to hate football. Because, you know, the Longhorns needed Lake Travis product Cameron Dicker to kick a game-winning field goal to beat the Stinking Jayhawks of Kansas. Well, that's not football's issue. That's Longhorn's issue. Like, if you just watched a different game, when one that was good, you know, then you wouldn't have had that problem. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to you, dude, to, to bring logic. At least the Cowboys look good. I know. That's the only thing that really salvaged good it. Good Lord. That was, that was, that's something we haven't seen in a few weeks. Hopefully, we'll see a little more of it. Yeah. Um, eh. Don't it's like WWE yeah, wrestling. Not, yeah, don't, I, I don't, know. Don't get your hopes up. Yeah, just keep those and, expectations. And we will low. get it. I mean, we will get to those low expectations of WWE here in a second. I, I wanted to. I wanted to touch on something. If you check us out on hornfm dot com or on your favorite podcast provider, we did a you know Wednesday night wars edition where we talked some AEW and NXT. And one thing we neglected to talk about was Chris Jericho. Uh, defending his AEW world title against Darby Allen. What was your what was your take on that match? Uh, were you impressed by Darby Allen? You and I have seen him both, seen him you know uh, a few times live, and we know what kind of what kind of a, a wrestler he is. But he really it, it was it was a it was an odd match. It was a good match, but it was odd. Well, what made it odd for you? I would say taping his hands behind his back, you know, or Jericho taping his hands behind his back, and you know that was a that was an interesting twist to the story. Oh, but we've seen that done before. We have. I I guess I just didn't expect it. I'm not saying it was bad. It was just odd. I, my 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 only, I guess my only gripe has ever been is just he only works one style essentially. Because I mean, I've I've called a match of his, right. but it was exactly what you would expect a Darby Allen match to be. Right, it, it, you know that's a lot of high risk, a lot of weaponry. Yeah, uh, somebody going through a table, maybe the opponent, that's... maybe Darby, maybe both at the same time. And and you wonder because, like for instance, on AEW Dark this week, they had Joey Janela taking on Brandon Cutler, and I know Joey Janela can wrestle a match without the, you know, the implements, the barbed mm-hmm. wire, the tacks, tables, whatever. And he did that, you know. It was a it was a fine match, you know. Got the win over Brandon Cutler. You wonder if Darby Allen can can act can wrestle a match. Now again, he's been in he's been a pro wrestler for I think four years. Is that correct? I would have to do some. I research. think I think that's correct. So this may be he found his niche and he's just sticking to it for now well I, and hopefully as he develops maybe he'll develop into a more well-rounded wrestler well i mean he tells a great story as it is i mean doing his style but a lot of the time i think it's because he's significantly in pain like yes. truly in pain my, my my big thing has always been how long can he keep up the current style without you, uh, it's kind of like riding a motorcycle. You know, you own a motorcycle, you will fall. <laughs> yeah. As as the as the comedy skit goes, but if you are in pro wrestling, you're going to get hurt. Maybe not, and hopefully not something serious. But you're definitely going to take your knocks, and uh, more than likely, with his high risk style, you can see him sinif- missing significant amount of time, but also shortening what could be a lengthy career. But I'm not sure if it will work if he doesn't have, because I really don't know if he has that capability. Right, and that's where I'm. That's what I'm getting at. Does he? Does he? Is he capable of just wrestling a straight 
wrestling I, match. I just don't want all the, 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 the really hardcore AEW people to think that's like a knock and it's automatically no. anti AEW, no. anti Darby. It's just like it's, no, I've never seen it. It's more it's I have more to go a, seek it out. It's more we want we want Darby Allen to stick around for a while. Yeah, he has and great. and if he keeps up with the style and the pace that he does now, we're not sure. How long he'll stick around? He, he has a great real life story. Oh, it's it's fantastic. It's it's a it's one of the best real life stories. You know, being homeless and and living on the streets before he signed the contract with AEW. Yeah, so I think people will resonate to him just because of the story. My question is, the fans that like him now. I mean, you know, the skateboard spot was cool. You see, uh, what does he call it? The 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 coffin. The coffin drop. The coffin it's, drop it's, is almost like it's a it's a uh, back. You know, he kind of jumps, falling back, and kind of keeps his arms you know folded in. But I mean, he's done that with trash cans on top of him, and on, right. and on the tables and things like that, and on the does steel on steps, the, on the ring apron. I've seen him do it in many different instances, and I mean he. I mean, he's young now, so those they haven't added up just yet. But I'm just, you know, concerned that that's something that might just hasten his uh, possible career opportunities later on in life. But yeah. uh, are the fans also going to appreciate him once he has to start working a different style? Yeah. I mean, I... we saw Jeff Hardy win a couple of titles, but his style never really evolved from the high risk taking. No, it did not. It, it didn't. Uh, you know, he kept that style. His entire WWE run, his TNA run, the brief you know moment he had in Ring of Honor, then back with WWE. So you're right. So I mean, again, this is just hoping that he doesn't take too much damage on his body to where we can see him stick around for a while and have a prosperous career. Well, the big question now is, Stu, is do you? enjoy the way that AEW has been trying to build lesser known talent. And, oh, absolutely. I mean lesser known to like the, the casual wrestling fan. I do because unlike WWE and we'll get to WWE in just a second. Unlike them, uh, you know, AEW and and again, this kind of comes from the whole they've got a clean slate. You know, yes, they have the established stars like a Chris Jericho and Cody Rhodes and Dustin Rhodes and the Bucks, but they're also, you know, they're also shining the spotlight on guys like Darby Allen, like Private Party, like Shima, who I mean had a long career but may not be well known in the United States. So, in that regards, yes, AEW is doing a fantastic job of doing that. I still wish they would tell a little bit more of the backstory why we're seeing these people. But and they're and they're working it in. I think it's just you know maybe I'm maybe I'm want it a different way. But it's not not say what they're doing is bad. I just prefer something else. But that's okay. I know who they are. We we know who they are. We've seen them. So um, anyway, that's that was just something we want. I wanted to touch on. Uh, speaking of WWE, <laughs> SmackDown last week. Uh what are your thoughts on Shorty G? Are you asking me because I'm short? No. Are you asking me because I'm about the same height as Gable? No. Because I would tell you that wasn't like necessarily short, but yeah, I'll say that's kind of undersized. <laughs> but I mean the the fact that they're going to refer to Chad Gable as Shorty G. Uh you know, at first I, I was like, this is ridiculous, but now I'm just like, well, it's working. We're talking about it. <laughs> it's like, I can't hate on it. I mean, is, is, well, is it, is it, is it kind of dumb? Yeah, but I mean, is it working? Does it overshadow I, Does it overshadow the fact that he is a, he is, he's a great wrestler? They have never really alluded to his Olympic background all that much until rather recently. Well, they didn't when he was in NXT. In fact, when he and Jason Jordan were American Alpha, they touched on the fact that both of them had been in the Olympics. So, okay, well, but they haven't touched on it in a while. You're right. I was like, I mean, the easy thing would just be to market him as Kurt Angle light, essentially. But I mean, well, Kurt's different. Kurt won a gold medal, right? 
it's it's kind of hard to compete with that. I mean, don't get me wrong, competing at the Olympics is is a great honor, it's, and it's still a very special. You know, the fact that he did compete in the Olympics it makes him a special athlete. Yeah, I mean, you, I, well, you can already tell he's a good athlete, and he seems to have a natural knack for this whole, yeah, at least WWE style of the business. Yes. And he's willing to play along, so I can't hate him for that. But I no, it's not a knock on Chad Gable. I'm just, I I'm just happy that they're doing something with him. <laughs> and maybe that's maybe that's the way to look at it. At least he's getting some TV time. So I'm just I'm just not a fan of the, you know, the whole thing with calling him short. It's kind of like, well, okay, hold it. Well, why even call him Chad Gable? That's not even his real name. I mean, why don't why don't he just use his real name then? Well, I would assume because he doesn't want to use his real name because maybe he wants to use that for anything he does outside of WWE. Because you know, remember, they copy, they trademark that stuff. Can they trademark your actual name? Isn't that I don't why know. they ask you to change your name? That might be, and that might be it. So, um, on the other side, Bailey, I saw a comparison. Bailey is is kind of like the the young girl. Who, you know, she starts out with bright, you know, the bright eyes and she loves everything and, you know, she hugs and, and the whole, you know, the positive outlook. And what we have seen in the last couple of weeks with her heel turn, it's kind of like she's also hit the teenage years and she hates everything and, and is listening to, you know, grunge metal and dressing in black. It, it was, it's, it's almost comical. Uh, and don't get me wrong, it's it's going to be fascinating to watch. But the whole, like, you know, on, on Ms. TV, where she basically ended her spiel about, you know, the fans didn't embrace her when she lost the title. And, you know, she only had the one friend, Sasha. And basically, life sucks and then you die. And it was like, okay, this is, you know, this was, it was just, I don't know. It, it just struck me as, as funny. I guess I don't know. It I guess it just really depends on where you are in your head at that moment. I'm sure there's other people that could really relate to it so they sure. kind of enjoy it. And, and at the same token, everybody's been wanting the Bailey heel, heel turn anyways. Yes. So fans really shouldn't complain in the sense that they've got what they wanted. In that case, that seems like it would and be a pretty think, solid thing think, for her career anyways. I don't think fans are necessarily uh complaining. It was just it's just it's just funny how they've how this has kind of come about, and I and maybe it's just because it's Bailey, you know. It's it's yeah. I don't really understand like another way that they would be able to exude that. Yeah, I know. I and you may, you may be right. I mean, all it can really be is she's she was already like a grown up twelve year old. So yeah. yeah, I mean the the whole teenage the grown up angst. twelve year old became grown up fourteen year old. Yeah, know. the teenage angst yeah. angle seems perfectly viable and especially when they're trying to cater towards a younger audience and a younger demographic you need to have stories that are very simplistic <laughs> right you know nobody wants that to overthink things you move to monday night raw um do we have to <laughs> you know let me okay let's let's start with this seth rollins umberto carrillo that was fun that was a fun match yeah it was really good it's, match. well it's nice to see the guys that you would never really see kind of get a chance to wrestle. Yes. And, and Carrillo, who has been wowing crowds, you know, in NXT and 205 Live, gets the spotlight with Universal Champion and, uh, and you know, does a really good job. I mean, it was a, it was a fantastic match. And, I mean, that's how you build and that's, young talent. That's right. You're you give them the rub. Right. Let them go toe-to-toe and not get squashed. Here's something we learned. I did not know that Lana's dream restaurant was in Cleveland. Now I've been to Cleveland and it's a fine town, but you know, my dream restaurant isn't in Cleveland. I mean, for of all the places in the world. I thought she was from the Midwest anyways. Well yeah, but they don't they live in California or something? I'm sure there's some good eateries, but maybe they just don't have that Midwest feel. I don't know exactly where the it was. Too. It was, uh, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, kind of. It was kind. Of, it was comical. It was just okay. So there's, there's say, a lot of stuff to laugh at with WWE here. But, the last last few days. But is it? 
is it so bad that it's funny or is it just funny because on its own terms it's funny? Like, I don't think you're supposed I to be taking... I think it's taking, a little bit of both. Like, if you're taking the whole Rusev thing seriously, I think you're not going to have fun with it. But if you see it as I, one big joke, like, I think everybody's supposed... To, I think it's supposed to be seen as a joke, and that's how you get the most enjoyment out of it. Oh, Lord, no. Come on. This is, this is WWE. Wait, they want to... They, they want this... They think this is like... But I think that's part of the joke, is that you're supposed to pretend uh, like it's okay. real. That's the style yeah, of comedy. Maybe. But that's... Maybe. By the way, kudos to Rusev for, for killing the what chance. At least while, you know, that was, and if you are, if, if you are in a WWE crowd and you're still doing the, no, if you're any wrestling crowd, I don't want to hear the what chance. Yeah. Just just stop. Just stop. It's like, you're just trying to get yourself over. Yeah. It's not needed. Right. So anyway, it's like, hasn't even Stone Cold said, like, if you could go back and change one thing, it would that was, be, yeah, he would take that away. Yeah. Cause I mean, don't get me wrong. It was nice to sell shirts, but I wasn't expecting that chant to stick around for 20 Between plus years. That and the CM Punk chant. Which, again, it's so 2000. Just stop. But those are the same fans that are going to the show. I the know. The same demographic's I been know. aging. So, I yeah. Know. You, know, you know how it is. Yeah. Like, even the great ones all suffer to stay within their decade when they were actually cool. We all we all suffer from it. Um, Drew McIntyre is the fifth member of Team Flair. Like, in if this- you could still own a Trans Am, you would. No, I'd want to. No, no, I, I, I still want a Corvette. Okay, well, either yeah. way, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, there was a, there was a time like when you know, because the very first movie I ever saw in a theater was Smokey and the Bandit. So yeah, when I was nine, you sure I wanted to Trans Am? You don't think they're still cool? Yeah, sure they're cool. I mean, <laughs> it's not like I would turn it down. So, um, Drew McIntyre is the fifth member of Team Flair for Crown Jewel. Good. Uh, had a, had a the hell of a match against Ricochet. So, yeah, isn't it fun to watch Ricochet lose? Well, sure. I mean, you know, you don't. You knew it was going. You knew he was going to win between Ric Flair being out there, and the fact that it's the first time we've seen Drew McIntyre on Raw in quite some time, especially since the draft. It was kind of like, okay, yes, Ricochet is going to take the loss here, and they get because they've got they've got the build the rivalry for this five on five. But, that, but that's how you that's how you should come back. You shouldn't come back and lose. We've seen people come back and lose. So right. It's good so he, he he came, came back, back and, and got a win. win. And it was a good win. Um Cain right. Velasquez, I thought he could I thought he could I mean I you could tell he was trying to not give Shelton Benjamin real punches, but I think he was trying a little too hard. I mean Well see Stu you tell me, and you tell me. If you, if you, no, the the punches were, they can use some work. But I was going right. to say, you see, he's a heavyweight, so right. he hits you so hard, even with slight tap, it's a heavyweight's punch. You have to remember that. <laughs> that's why. That's why. There's that's why a, you almost, are the greatest co-host that ever lived. There's like justification for want, almost everything that can you. happen in pro wrestling. Yes. Uh, just people have to look for it. Absolutely. This is why I, sometimes I feel like, oh, I can, I can definitely fill in for Corey Graves someday. Absolutely, of course. Just get the, get the, get the faux hawk, faux hawk and, and the get, shave and some fake and a tat- bunch and bunch of tattoos. Get some I tattoos mean, and find a way to woo like, Carmella. I was like, I already have the suits. Uh, uh, yeah, you do. You will that that <laughs> in, absolutely. You do have the suits. Uh, coming up this Friday on SmackDown. So even though Seth Rollins burned down the Firefly Funhouse, apparently it's returning, which meant Bray Wyatt found a Home Depot somewhere and built that thing really quick. He could go into contracting, you know. Well, I'm sure that he paid some people. I am. I don't think still unless he has like a fire fun funhouse fly whatever crew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you say that three times fast. Yeah. So anyway, that will Firefly that will funhouse. return. Um, which and apparently Fox was having some fun with it because. They sent a tweet. You thought we didn't like this stuff. Uh, <laughs> Hogan and Flair will be there to further that story along because Crown Jewel is a week from Thursday. So, are you taking an off day or what to watch? Um, I will not. T- I'm actually working from home, so so you're just... so I'll just watch. I'll watch it while I'm here. You know, get ready for the trick or treaters. You know, so. Uh, one, one little bit of bad news, uh, Xavier Woods, he, there, he was on the, um, crew that was doing the, the tour through Australia. They had a house show in Sydney. 
He has suffered an Achilles injury. Ooh. They have not said what the extent of the injury is, but if you hear the reports and rumor innuendo, it is not good, and he could be out for an extended period of time. Wow. So well, that sucks. It does suck. I, I mean, the cool thing is he has like the social media stuff that he can work on. He still got his up, up, down, down stuff. He can still come out and play the trombone while, you know, Big E and, and Kofi, you know, do the stuff in the ring. They've but, got that tag team, greatest tag team turmoil thing in Saudi Arabia coming up. I know, but he was supposed to be a, a huge dynamic of SmackDown. Yes. Yes, well... Like, the New Day was going to be a big part of it. Well, they can still be a big part of it. It just now will be... It will just be Kofi and Big E in the ring with, with Xavier on the outside. Yeah, but it's different because those are the guys of the future where Kofi is kind of still on his way out. I don't see him sticking around for much more than a couple of more years. I don't know. I mean, the one fear I have, and I really hope they don't do this, the fear I had as soon as I heard this was they would pounce on this opportunity to split up the New Day. And I hope they don't do that. This is one New Day is one of those teams that they just need to stick around. And maybe I maybe I'm in the minority, but I I don't want to see the New Day split up. Uh, they will eventually, but the day that they do it, it has to be worth something. Yes, it can't just be not not because somebody got hurt. Well, yeah, you would hope not. I mean, but you, you know, injuries happen when you least expect it. It's just one of those things that happen with with life, but. In the sense where it's like, uh, in this case, you would just hope that they continue to go the route that they're going with the New Day, at least for a little while, and that when that day comes where they do break it up, it's like Big E's position to go for the WWE title or something of significance, and they just don't do it just to do it. Right. Let's not, yeah, I I agree. Um, We're going to take a quick time out. When we come back, New Japan Pro Wrestling is extending its reach into the United States market. We will talk a little NJPW of America. That's coming up next on Sports Guys Talking Wrestling on the Horn. SCU! This is Scorpio Sky, and you are listening to the best, the best, the best Sports Guys Talking Wrestling. The pride of the West, SCU! Sports guys talking wrestling on the horn. Stu Myrick, Justin the Smash Simmons. I miss Scorpio Sky. Hope we get to see him You get soon. to see him every week. Well, we get to see him on TV. And AEW is coming to Texas on December 11th in Garland, December 18th in Corpus Christi. So maybe go down there and hang out with him for a little bit. Um, We mentioned before the break, New Japan Pro Wrestling extending its reach in the U.S. market. They have had such a a successful year with their events here, including the G1 opening night in Dallas, several events on the West Coast. They had that swing uh, on the East Coast. They've got another event. Um, was it, is it Fight Spirit Unleashed, I think, coming up in San Jose? Anyway, so they announced on Monday... They have established a subsidiary. It's called New Japan Pro Wrestling of America. Very original. I know. Well, you know, why mess with the brand? The company will be based in California and will begin operations next month. Um, This is kind of huge. You know, this is a, another story in this month that we where we have seen r- the wrestling world just ever changing ever evolving and now new japan is going to set up a, a base they've already they already have the dojo in la but now they're going to set up a whole operation here in the u.s yeah it, it seems like they had this pretty well planned out apparently from from the get-go it was they they released a lot of infographics with everything it seemed like it was part of a five-point plan pretty much in order to infiltrate the u.s market and a lot of it was those shows kind of just testing what American audiences be there. 
The dojo will now turn into an office space, along with continuing to act as a dojo. So basically, it just means more opportunities for people in the United States to be featured in, in, in a bigger capacity than what would have happened even just, well, five years ago. It's been a big difference. It has. Uh, you know, we know Barrett Brown, uh, a great independent talent here in Texas. He's been working a lot in the L.A. Dojo. I think he goes there almost every couple months. Um, yeah, they what they yeah they mentioned you know this was part of a three phase plan. The third or they mentioned this was the third phase of NJBW's expansion into the U.S. Like you said, phase one was discovering new wrestlers in markets outside of Japan, developing talent through the L.A. Dojo. Phase two was to run events in the U.S., including the G1 Supercard Madison Square Garden, which they did with Ring of Honor, and then having the opening night of the G1 Climax this year in Dallas by themselves, and then phase three, establish a company within the U.S. and be ingrained in the everyday fabric which, when it comes to the fans' wrestling consciousness. This is coming from uh, NJBW's English website. They, they mentioned... Um, few things about this. So does that mean that the U.S. title is going to be the main title? Because it makes more sense now that they even had a U.S. title and they actually have, I guess what you would say, Gaijin compete for it. <laughs> it could be. I mean, they what they want to do is they're talking that they could double the number of live events they will do in the U.S., uh, they, in fact, they set up the touring structure, one of the, one of the infographics that you mentioned. Uh, one, the touring structure will see events being run in five key areas. Uh, you'll have in the West six state, six cities across four states. The Midwest has seven cities across six states. The Southeast, six cities across four states. The East, four cities across three states. And then four cities just in Texas. I know how how beneficial. Unfortunately, I'm sure that all those Texas cities are going to be like within the central area. To North Texas, to Houston, to well, us, yeah, I in would San Antonio, I imagine. I would suspect Dallas, Houston, Austin, San Antonio will probably be a an area, and yeah. maybe I don't know if they do El Paso or somewhere out I west. I don't know who the fourth one would be. Would it be like Amarillo, just because Terry Funk's from Amarillo? It's possible. Um, I, I could see that. I mean, San Antonio... They didn't mention what cities. I know, that's, that's why. They, I'm just trying to think when they mention the amount of cities, though, it's like, okay, that's great. So Dallas and Houston, that's a gimme. We already can tell that Dallas and Houston are going to get their people. But when it came to the next two cities, I figure it's a split between Austin and San Antonio, and that would share a, a market. That would be my guess because they're so close together. You know, a lot of people consider the Austin... You know that that the Central Texas market or South Central Texas, they count kind of Austin, San Antonio in the same market. Yeah, so. they kind of combine. So that that final city, whether it be El Paso, Amarillo, or even the Rio Grande Valley, those are the only places I could see. Maybe Laredo, because I'm just trying to think of areas that WWE will actually go to and hit on their house tour shows, or where they have actually ran Raw before. And thinking like I'm thinking they would run the Rio Grande Valley just because you get all those travelers from Mexico mm -hmm. to come over and be able to watch the card there. But then you can have the same thing in El Paso, so I'm not sure. You know, and that's that's kind of an interesting. You, or yeah, Laredo. I'm kind of I'm, I'm I'm think kind of the same thing. If you do the Rio Grande Valley, yeah, you'll get a lot of crossover traffic from Mexico. Um, but you could see the same thing, whether it's Laredo, El Paso, you know, it'll be interesting to see where else they set up, uh, as far as the state of Texas goes. Uh, they did mention, they talked about their, their, uh, audience. Um, you know, it's, they mentioned, it's so f funny. They mentioned that their audience, their, um, Japanese audience is pretty balanced between male and female, 66% male, 40% female. While in the U.S., it's much he much more skewed male. They're talking in the a ratio of eighty twenty. Why doesn't that surprise me? It uh, yeah. <laughs> I it, was it, like, you go to any independent show, that's what you're going to see. No, no wrong, nothing wrong with that. I mean, people like what they like. Well, and that's another thing they mentioned. They said, um, you know, American fans, you have a diverse age range, diverse tastes, 
a mix of several different styles of wrestling. Uh, you know, they the they're cognizant of the fact that a lot of young fans will view content digitally rather than through TV, and they hope to take take advantage of that. But- um, they're they are thinking of possible tours, kind of like what we see in Japan, where you have King of Pro Wrestling and uh, Road to Dominion and, and those types of tours. There is talk they could do similar tours in the U.S., where they go three, four weeks at a time. You know, um, something, something along, say, maybe Fighting Spirit Unleashed. Maybe they take that through the through a Texas loop or. You know, do a, a a version of the Super J Cup and do that through California or something. Well, I mean, it makes sense with a company like New Japan because of the way they've always handled travel, at least overseas, where they book everything for this talent. They take care of the rooms. They take care of the transportation. So uh, conceivably, they have way, way back history when it comes to prior knowledge of putting on these type of tours so they can already do that at home i'm sure that they can implement that here that shouldn't be an issue the big thing is for me what talent are you going to see with new japan uh, the u.s version of it essentially and what will make it on par with new japan the original version now or new japan uh nippon whatever you want to call it (laughs) their home base Uh, yeah. yeah because yes it can be strong style but it's just like any any other wrestling you see. It's done right <laughs> over there. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be done right here. Right. And, in fact, it, there was a mention of – um, let's see. I'm trying to find – I'm going through the through the release and uh, the transcript from the press conference. They did mention about, you know, possibly having, uh, you know, the U.S. tours run concurrently with Japanese tours, or could they run at the same time? There's talk that – they could run the U.S. events um, kind of, you know, say you've got a Japanese tour, then a U.S. tour, and then a Japanese tour. That way they can take advantage of maybe bringing over some of the big names from New Japan while at the same time utilizing the talent that they find here in the U.S. Uh, they're talking about uh, scale of events. They're currently running and looking at venues in the 2,000-seat range. It's, you know, and I think it's what that's a wise, it's a, it's a very self-aware move on New Japan's part because they, they kind of understand who they are. But I and, think a lot of that's almost culturally, like the Japanese understanding yeah. uh, and looking at ways or looking at things a certain way. And, right. I, and actually, I love the way that they have handled this because you can tell that they have taken into account almost every little aspect of of the u.s wrestling fans so it, it's it's gonna boggle my mind how they balance out things between what they put on for their fans in japan who are a completely different culture than us and then come over here with our diverse taste and see how they can cater to the u.s fan i mean the one big thing that they did note that they have going for it is they note that americans tend to have a penchant for the love of strong style mm-hmm. and they're the yes. originators of yeah it. absolutely you know they um they also they mention about uh, there's no plans to reduce the number of Japanese events, so you know you, you're not going to see them, you know, rob Peter to pay Paul in a, in respect. In other words, you know, if they're wanting to do a show, say say in Dallas, they're not going to sacrifice what you may see at Budokan or or um, um, you know or in Osaka to to make the show in Dallas work. There you're still going to get the shows you get in Japan. This is going to be just a supplement to that to that product. Uh in fact, here we go. The they have they're discussing how many events they want to do every year in the US. They did uh what a dozen events in 2019 in the US. Um it says, and I quote, "I uh, this was from, and forgive me, um, but anyway, the, the quote is, I think we could be in the region of double that next year. So, could see more New Japan shows in the U.S. I mean, that's, so that's what, 24? Which is, which is great, but 
I mean, with the oversaturation of the pro wrestling market, they have to come with something special. It can't just be a show. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, let me take that back. I'm sure that the first couple of shows, people will attend, it'll sell out just due to, and buy it, however, just right. out of curiosity. The curiosity factor. But right. after that, in order for it to be successful, it's going to have to do more than just find its own little market, I feel. Because I, I, uh, that, that little market seems to be coveted by the whole shebang of, of pro, pro wrestling promotions. Everything from your indie circuit, so mm-hmm. GCW to bar wrestling yep. to... To Inspire to, you know... Yeah, uh, but, uh, but, but everything to AEW AD, to AD, Ring of Honor right. to Impact. I mean, we're all, they're all vying for the same audience and just right. to add another player to it. I, because the WWE is always going to have a casual WWE audience. Yes. They might not ever, uh, you know... Something that people pull up online is that AEW is what beating them in the rate ratings, but well, uh, beating NXT right now. exactly. Yeah. But I'm just like, oh, that's just one show, and even then, they pull almost a million in on NXT alone, right? And they still pull over a million per SmackDown and, and per Raw. Raw. I mean, it's not highest numbers ever, but if you could get a product on their, TV that right. you're going to get a million people watching. They've got their market share, and, and I don't think, and I'm pretty sure New Japan understands that. You know, it's kind of like AEW. Look, we know WWE is going to get theirs. We're just, we just want a piece of the pie, and and this is, uh, it's way, way, and it's you know yet another option. Now, I do, I agree with you. I think, you know, again, we talked about this before about the the you know the possibility of oversaturation of the market with so many opportunities. They did mention. Uh, they do plan to uh, for the events to be live on NJBW World. Um, they're also talking to Access TV, so they haven't quite worked out broadcast details. As, you know, made them firm, but they're in the works. So it will be it'll be exciting to watch. That's for sure. Um, this well, this the, we say that, but we, we don't think. really know, right? We think, and again, I guess the big thing is how do you define success in pro wrestling? For people that aren't the WWE, because do you would you say ROH is successful just because it's been around the longest, even though its talent's not where it used to be? Would you say that Impact is successful because it's been able to to strave off elimination for so long? <laughs> but it, it has built a couple of you know stars, but I'm still not sure of anybody that's well known outside of the independent wrestling circles. Yeah. Yeah. A, and that's that's my thing with AEW that we're still going to see is can they build those stars outside of the independent circle and make them national stars? Right, right. Uh, you know, we, only time will tell. Uh, but we'll definitely keep keep up to date. You know, keep an eye on it and see what happens. So when we come back from this timeout in our podcast only segment, Impact Wrestling had a pay per view that I completely forgot about. So we will recap everything that happened from Bound for Glory. And we are less than six months away from WrestleMania. And usually we have an idea of what the main event could be. Is that true this time? We'll talk about it next on Sports Guys Talking Wrestling. I am in the top 1%. This is EC3 and you are listening to Sports Guys Talking Wrestling. Sports Guys Talking Wrestling podcast only segment. Stu Myrick, Justin the Smash Simmons. Did you see the the ride along with EC3, Drake Maverick, and Braun Strowman? No, I can't. It was that I did. it was actually pretty funny. Yeah, I mean, it, well, anytime, it's so funny. It, it, well, first of all, anytime you can get EC3 and Drake Maverick, Rockstar Spud, whatever you want to call him, get those two together. That's comedy, you know. That's comedy <laughs> gold. And then put Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman makes you know crams. Drake Maverick into the back with all the bags. So he's sitting in the back seat in the middle and he's got everybody's bags on either side of him. So he's doing this, but then they had to stop for ice cream. They're in, they're in New York. This was, um, I want to say this was when they did the, the two night raw and SmackDown at Madison square garden. So they, they were going to the garden from their hotel and they had to stop for like ice cream because Drake wanted ice cream. And it was, it was, 
it was just funny. It was really funny. I liked it. It was good stuff. So, um, well, at least you're entertained. Yeah, I like the ride along things just because you get to, you get to see some some hilarity ensue. You know, I was just wondering why they just don't bring him back as Derek Bateman. Uh, I think it'd just be I, funny at this point. They're not doing anything with him as EC3. They're not, they're so. not, I was going to say why you know they're at not least. doing anything with him anyway. So, um, a couple things. First of all, I do want to hit because. We totally, I totally forgot about it, but Impact Wrestling's, you know, we were talking about it during um, during the last time we were talking about New Japan. Impact Wrestling had a pay-per-view. It was the, and it's their signature pay-per-view, Bound for Glory. I keep on forgetting that's like their WrestleMania. Yeah, it was in Chicago uh, on Sunday. And from all reports, I did not see it, but from all, I've seen a few highlights. From all reports, it was a good pay-per-view. And of course, this is, you know, they are now on the fast lane to their debut on access TV. They're what? 10th TV partner in their history. Something like that, but yeah. they keep on finding partners. They do. You know, it, again, they're, they're, they, uh, they are surviving. <laughs> it's like those, like those people that always have a relationship. Like they just always find one. They do. I don't know how, what, what they agree to, but they seem to find one. Yeah. Um, they don't want to be by themselves. They had a call your shot gauntlet match. That was actually kind of fun. It was a gauntlet match. Uh, the winner received a shot at any Impact title that they wanted. Eddie Edwards, who was entrant number one, ended up surviving the whole way, and he wins the gauntlet. couple of surprise entrants. Joey Ryan yeah. showed up, and apparently he has signed with Impact. Yes. Yeah, he's already reported that on, online. Yeah, he, he mentioned on Twitter. He put out a tweet, and he talked about, you know, they, you know they're, they're letting him be Joey Ryan. And he can still do his indie dates. Yeah. Because that's one of the things, that's one of the things Impact does that I don't think anybody else does right now is their wrestlers can take indie dates. You know, they will see. In fact, um, I want to say, well, we had, we had uh, all ego Ethan Page at the last uh Inspire show. Yeah. One half of the Impact Tag Team ta- Champions. Yeah, he was able to come and, yeah. and do his shows. I, I guess that... Just means they take reduced indie dates, but they can still keep. I don't know how it works, honestly. I th- I don't think there's a. Ma- I don't think there's. I think it's just they can't take one to conflict with maybe a TV taping or something. I would assume. Yeah. Like you but other make than that, yourself available for the bigger payday. Right. I mean, that's but, just good business. But other than that, hey, you know, you so so. Congratulations, to Joey Ryan. He, you know, he's he was in Impact TNA years ago. In fact, I met him. It was 2012. They did lockdown at Alamo Dome in San Antonio. Our mutual friend Steve Foster and I got to go, and I got to we got to meet not only Velvet Sky but Joey Ryan. It was uh, yeah. great. That was the one where they did the um, Bully Ray turned on Hogan, mm-hmm. tried to reenact the whole NWO Hogan turning, and basically it was it was okay. Um, Got him a title run. Did. Um, <laughs> let's see. Kylie Ray was an entrant. You know, she had she she started with AEW. Um, kind of just disappeared. They she asked for and was granted her release from AEW. So she showed up at, at in the gauntlet match. Uh, we'll see if she is going to stay with Impact. Um, you know, hopefully she does. Hopefully she's she's happy. Uh, the only title change, Ace Austin, is your new X Division champion. He won the ladder match uh, from from all reports. Crazy. There was a sight of Ace Romero mm-hmm. on top of the ladder, and Tessa Blanchard th- pushes the ladder over. He falls off the ladder onto a table, and then the ladder comes over the rope and hits him on, hits him on the head. Apparently. Yeah, I was like. So, hope he's okay. Um, I mean, he was excited to be, you know, part of the big boys. He was. He was. Uh, otherwise, all the tail, all the titles stay with the champions, including Brian Cage, still your Impact World Champion, defeating Sam, Sammy Callahan. So, uh, all in all, like I said, you know, from all reports, it was a good pay per view and a good way to maybe boost their um, um, their road to Access TV. So, as we said, Impact Wrestling starts next Tuesday. On Access TV, um, 
I think I think they did the tapings right after Mouth of Glory. But I uh, have in fact, no to, clue. In how fact, they did the uh, re- recording this on on Tuesday night, uh, which by the way, Game One of the World Series. Uh, they did a "This Is Impact Wrestling" kind of an introductory. Hey, this is what this is who we are on Access TV. So there's that. I wanted to do this real quick, um, and I'm totally stealing this from our friends at What Culture Wrestling. They had something like this, and I I, and it was, I thought it was a really good idea. So as we sit here on October 22nd, we are less than six months away from WrestleMania. In Tampa Bay. And I have printed out the rosters. In color. In color. As they, you know, as they stand now with, you know, that right after the draft. I want you to tell me who right now would main event WrestleMania. Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. Again, So you want to see them, you would see them again. Tile for title. I'm not, say, I'm not saying this was... Well, remember, Charlotte doesn't have the title. Are you saying she's going to win it <laughs> yeah. back from Bailey? Yeah. Dude, that, that, that's like a safe. People will love it. They can be in a four corners match. I don't care. But the women probably will get another chance to headline if there's not another significant big story going into it. Because other than that, it's going to just be Brock and whoever he has to face. You're right. You're right. I mean... Because we all know that Brock isn't going to lose to Cain Velasquez over at right. Saudi Arabia. Right. Yeah, we know that. Um, is is that a... I mean, you know, you, usually, you, going back a few years, we usually have an idea of who's going to main event WrestleMania this far out. But I'll be honest. I would believe that, but... There's not much else that really jumps out at me. I mean, do you put Roman Reigns in a in a main event? If you feel like he needs to have a title, then why not? I mean, he can be. But they've you know they've kind of kept him away from title picture. Well, we don't really. I'm not sure how healthy. Again, six is, months out. So I mean, is he tr- is he truly healthy? Is he still I think dealing? He is. is he still dealing with some of the ramifications from his treatments? I would think if if he was, he wouldn't be in the ring. To begin with, um, not now, necessarily. He did have, he par- apparently, he did have a. Uh, there was a slight injury during a uh, during a, a house show, one of the Australia events, but apparently he's fine. I mean, because they, they, you already know, you can't give the title to somebody that's going to be unavailable. And maybe that's what they're looking at. Maybe to see if he's not I, having any relapses, right? And I and I've heard that you know I've heard that's that's kind of why they've kind of shot away from putting Daniel Bryan back in that title picture. Because you just don't know. I mean, All Grant, the, he just held the title. He lost to Kofi at, at WrestleMania. But at the same token, he could have had a longer run. Or Jersey, I mean. And and it'd be like his last great run. But you, somebody that's susceptible to concussions in a business where you, you have a possibility of landing on your neck, on your head, just because... Not necessarily because you try to, but just something that you had planned didn't go the way that you thought it was going to happen, because that yeah. happens a lot. Uh, that's something that could definitely ruin your plans for the storylines if you have this stuff written three, six months out. Like a lot of the WWE storylines, they try to do anyways, especially for WrestleMania, they usually have this stuff written well in advance. They they used to. You're right. And like like we said, you know, usually about this time, we have an idea. We may not know the exact match, but we have an idea. But I'll be honest. There are, I don't know, there's, I mean, they. there's not really anybody. And I'll be honest, I'm not so sure Becky and Charlotte because we've seen that match but what else countless times. Yeah, but you've seen every match on AEW countless times from those performers on the independent scene. I mean, what makes sense? Well, yeah, but different? you don't. But, but they. I'm just. I'm again. This is it's, just WrestleMania. It, but it's the same argument, Stu. If you've seen the product and you've seen the match happen before, then what would make it any different? Just because they are finally on national television, it's the same are deal. You, so, so your ba- So, it's. I, I, I've seen uh, if. A Joey Janela versus Sammy Guevara match would probably be the same at GCW or uh, Inspire or at any other independent hall that you have ever been right. to. It's going to be the same match that you but, probably get on TV. Okay, 
I understand that. However, and you've in, already seen it. We've already seen it in those in those promotions, not necessarily in AEW. Remember, put put in in that promotion. It's a world unto itself. You you, you can't you can't compare that. Why not? We've seen I've Becky seen and it. Charlotte. I'm the audience. We've seen Becky and Charlotte in WWE. I know that a bunch of times. I know, but I'm the audience. If I've already seen it, I've already seen it. So why? It's like you're still booking the same thing I've already seen, right, just with you, a new label on it. But again, what makes that fresh? And so, again, this is the issue I had when they started. It's like, okay, if we're going to be critical of AEW or WWE, are you going to be critical in the same manner for AEW? Because if they're giving me matches that I've already seen, it's essentially like, okay, you take it from the independent scene and now you put it on national television. You're taking it off of everyday Raw shows. We've already seen it at WrestleMania, but guess what? You're going to elevate it again to the top of the heap at WrestleMania. I, I don't see that there's a difference there. And I, and I get what you're saying. I I just I don't know. Let's let's put it this way. That is as good an option as I I would I can think of because again, there's not really anything that screams WrestleMania main event right now. Unless it's just the four horsewomen doing battle. So it would be Bailey, Sasha, Charlotte. You know, that'd be the one that Becky. they haven't. That you know, that's and that's something they haven't. I mean, they did it for the the first SmackDown. Well, at this point, we were supposed to already have the Shield triple match headline WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah, and, that ain't happening. Well, not anytime soon, uh, or at least not in their promotion anytime soon. It could. You never know when it could happen. I'm sure it will happen sometime down the road. And I'll pull this audio and show you guys that I was right. You know, <laughs> ten years later, but. Yeah, mark I mean, the tape. <laughs> but the the four horsewomen doing battle against each other would probably be the n- next significant thing that can happen that has had that long of a storyline. Yeah, I, I could. It's possible, um, and it's it's kind of funny that that's as likely of a main event as anything right well, now. Well, you have nobody, and this is what happens sometimes when they go with their short-term fixes it's like you don't have a ronda rousey to kind of pay back what happened at the last wrestlemania unless she's coming back i'm not sure she said she was going to have the baby um i'm not sure if she's already going to halfway there or she's you know i don't who has who knows so that that's the one thing that kind of sucks is that you had her win it last year she doesn't have to come back and pay back the favor to anybody else oh ronda lost oh you mean becky won it yeah so she should pay back the favor um yeah, I, I know it. Like I said, I just I don't have a feel for it. I think I I don't know. I don't know. Seth Rollins. Well, if he's would he it, would he have will he even have the universal title come probably. WrestleMania? Probably. You know, you had um, him win a Hell in the Cell, essentially. <laughs> no, he didn't win. Remember, because it was a no no contest. But he didn't lose the belt. It's good enough as a win if you don't lose the belt. Yeah. I guess. Um, anyway, just it was an interesting exercise, and I, I really don't know what's going to happen for WrestleMania. So I did see Joey Janela promote his Spring Break show in Tampa. I know WrestleMania that weekend. Like, that, that, that oh, like did fun. you see? So apparently, Impact Wrestling wants to bring back TNA. Yes, during WrestleMania weekend. Brilliant idea. And they want and they want the Young Bucks. Yeah. They want the Young Bucks versus uh, Motor City Machine Guns. I would love to see it. I'd like to see if they make it happen. I that mean, would the, be awesome. I'm not sure what type of contract the Young Bucks have. <laughs> I'm not sure either. Because while they might be part of the company, they don't necessarily own the company. Right. They're not owners. They're, they're EVPs and their talent. So... So I'm not sure if their contract allows them to go compete at another U.S. based promotion, right? You know that it isn't an independent, non televised event. Essentially, I don't know. That'd be that'd be. I mean, well, but it would it would at least go on Twitch because you know the Impact's been using Twitch a lot. So, but what happens? But now you're thinking about all these other things. I'm not sure how Impact handles it. But if I'm Con. Tony and, Khan, mm-hmm. and I'm paying for all this stuff. Yes. Why do I want my cornerstone tag team go out and get hurt on some on somebody else's show? I'm kind of the same. I'm thinking the same thing. 
It's like, I think as a businessman, he would think that's a stupid thing to let happen. But as a wrestling fan and trying to well, build goodwill, I can understand letting him not, do it. Not to mention Nick and Matt have have not been very flattering of their time in TNA. You know, they they kind of they kind of dismiss that because of the way they were used and the way they were booked. Um they don't they don't have the warmest of feelings. Yeah, so, but now it's kind of seen like a one's night stand show and that changes right, everything. Right. I, I get that. And it's giving if they're true wrestling fans, like their gimmick is that they just happen to be wrestling fans that happen to become wrestlers, essentially. That's exactly right. Right. Yeah. And if that's the case, the wrestling fans want to see them go against the Motor City Machine Guns. And, and that if, means that you have to bring back the machine guns. You do? Well, I mean, Alex Shelley is is wrestling. I think he's in, he's still in Ring of Honor. I think he was, didn't I see something? Maybe he was a guest coach at the F- Performance Center. Yeah, he looked like he was on his way out, though. Yeah. So I, I couldn't tell. And, and then you had Saban doing stuff Saban, himself. Saban had been injured. I don't know what his status is. Um, but if he's healthy and if Alex Shelley isn't like signed somewhere, why not? Well, you know, one, one more, one more ride. Sure. That could be interesting. But is it worth it for the bucks? I, you know, that's, I think the, only they can. So they and can and not only that, it's like, if that's all you want to see, you just want to see that, that event at T at whatever the TNA rebirth show would be. Well, hey, they have their own promotion. Couldn't they just put the the event on AEW against them against the Motor Machi- Motor City Machine Guns? And you would think it would be just as good. If yeah. not, they probably take more risk because they would right. be covered by right. that by by their own. I agree. Company, of course, that would mean they'd have to sign Alex Shell and Chris Saban, which I'm sure they probably would, at least for a one time only deal. Interesting. We'll we'll see what happens. I, I'll be interested to see if that if that show does develop and what it looks like, you know, because it's WrestleMania weekend, so you know, pretty much every wrestling talent that's not AEW will be in town. And it's not like how it used to be, where people aren't booked. <laughs> now people are booked oh, out few, all the time. Yeah, now, so yeah, you know, like you know, I remember, I still them. remember uh, Orlando WrestleMania thirty three weekend. I remember ACH had like eight or nine bookings in the span of. 72 hours. I was like, I like wrestling too, but I'm not the one that actually has to go do it. That's different. Right. (laughs) Right. It's hard enough just to go to the events. So anyway, a lot of good stuff there. When we come back from this timeout, we'll let you know what's happening in independent wrestling around the area. You're listening to sports guys talking wrestling. Stand back. There's a hurricane coming through. This is Shane hurricane Helms. And you're listening to sports guys talking wrestling. And if not, What's up with that? Sports guys talking wrestling on the horn. Stu Myrick, Justin the Smash Simmons. Some good wrestling coming up this weekend. We got to tell you about it. We are going to start in Corpus Christi. Gulf Coast Wrestling Alliance presents Nightmare on Air Street Friday at the Valencia Event Center in Corpus Christi. Bell time, 7.30 p.m. Chase Owens. From we talked about New Japan Pro Wrestling, Chase Owens from Bullet Club will be there. The Light Heart Throb, Gino, Christy James, Ion, and more. That's Gulf Coast Wrestling Alliance Friday night in Corpus Christi. New Texas Pro Wrestling presents Down the Rabbit Hole Friday at Homer's Bar and Venue in Abilene. Bell Time 8 p.m. Mysterious Q, Terrell Tempo, Baby D, Max Castellanos, and more. That's New Texas Pro Wrestling Friday night in Abilene. Dallas Championship Wrestling presents a brawl for it all Saturday at Oak Highlands Brewery in Dallas. Bell time, 7 p.m. The IWGP United States Champion Lance Hoyt will be there. Adam Asher of the Lone Star Apocalypse will be there. Moonshine Mantel, Dirty Andy Dalton, and more. That's DCW Saturday night in Dallas. And Saturday in Beaumont, Hurricane Pro Wrestling presents International Style Battle at Ford Park. Bell time, 7 p.m. Bestia 666 will be there. Ray Horace, Ricky Starks, Will Alday, Heather Monroe, and more. That's Hurricane Pro Wrestling Saturday in Beaumont. And that's a look at independent wrestling around the area. Make sure you go catch some great wrestling action near you. I feel like you're doing Ricky Starks a disservice by not mentioning from NWA Ricky Starks. Um, In fact, on the most recent edition of NWA Power, 
the world champion, Nick Aldis, mentioned Ricky Starks as the man that would be his number one draft pick. I don't blame him. High praise from the the holder of the 10 pounds of gold can we, can we for give Stroke him, Daddy. By the way, let me take this time just to shout out more love to Billy Corgan, what they've done at NWA, because, I mean, man, it is perfect. It's one hour. They get the most out of the hour. They have funny commercials. It is it's, so good. Aaron Stevens, you know, the former Damien Sandow, with this whole no eye contact thing is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That's so good. It's little subtleties, but, I mean, it's really working for the way that they have their show structured. Yeah. I don't know how it would work outside of the studio show structure, but for now, the way that they're doing it, I love it. Uh, and, man, Eli Drake, if you're not watching him, I know Stu mentioned it before, he, like one of the best talkers, and I, I really didn't see it that way, but now that I've seen him more on NWA, I'm like, yeah, this guy, he can talk. He talks probably one oh. of the best ones I've heard. Oh, Eli, you, we saw it when he was in TNA. Uh, yeah, I mean, but I didn't. He always, just didn't get a lot of chances. But. Exactly, I didn't always watch TNA either. So I, I imagine even those chances when he was doing a lot better, I, I really wasn't watching. Just that's just right. how it was at the no, time. I get you. I get you. But, but now yeah. getting him to see him on NWA, he's like, oh wow, there is a place for these guys. It just hadn't existed. Like Tim Storm, like I think he's fantastic for what they have going on there. His his ruggedness, his his veteranship. Since he's been in the business for so long, it actually works for him in the NWA as opposed to against him. Just because that's the style of wrestling that they're trying to cater yes, to. Yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah, you know, and Tim Storm, um, you know, he made it like he was probably going to retire or something. And then uh, Eli Drake talked him into being in a tag team. So we'll see how that develops. But yeah, fantastic stuff. Check out NWA Power every Tuesday, 6.05 p.m. Eastern on YouTube and Facebook. So. Yeah, and their pay-per-view is coming up. I heard they sold out for their pay-per-view. Pay-per-view and, in Atlanta, December 14th, and then they'll do more tapings on the 15th and 16th. And I saw that Thunder Rosa is supposed to make her appearance. Yeah, she should be coming up week. soon. Yeah. And they already released the teaser video like they did for Ricky Starks about who they are. Yeah. Something that they've also done well, too, because they know a lot of the people that they're showcasing. People don't know who they are necessarily. Uh, what do you got going this weekend? <laughs> more work than most people would normally like to have on a weekend, but it's all good. Um, more football, uh, both soccer and high school. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a pretty full week. Yeah. Uh, this week, like Travis comes off the bye, the Nate Yarnell era begins, at least for the time being, as Lake Travis travels to Del Valley to take on the Cardinals. That's a 7-15 pregame, 7-30 kick. Mark and Bucky in the, bo in the booth. I'll be on the sidelines. You can hear that on 104.9 FM. So is their last game of the year against Buda? No. Hayes? Uh, no. Uh, they got – it's Del – they're at Del Valley. Next week home against Hayes. And then the following week, the regular season finale is at House Park against Anderson. Okay. Well, Anderson's actually decent this year. So. They are. They have a good quarterback, apparently. They hung so, 70 on Austin High. so <laughs> They've been they've been scoring a lot this year. And again, yeah. it's because their quarterback is a dual-threat quarterback, but I'm not sure he'll have that same success against Lake Travis or Westlake, for that matter, because I know they play Westlake soon. Yeah. But yeah, was just interested in the fact that <laughs> there's a really – there's a high legitimate chance. Well, I think Hayes, Hayes be, plays Westlake this week, I think. They, they would have uh, – yes, because, again, the back-to-back. -back. So that means Hayes gets Westlake this week, and then they get Lake Travis next week. Because I was like, there is an outside shot of them going into this matchup against Lake Travis undefeated, but I thought they were going to play Lake Travis first. I so. seriously don't. But they're going against Westlake undefeated. Hey, which anything is can happen. Anything I mean, can happen. you winning all the games you're supposed to win, that's one thing. Yeah. Saturday. The Texas Longhorns travel to Fort Worth to take on the TCU Horn Frogs. That is a 2.30 p.m. kick all across the Austin Radio Network. That means Texas game day starts four hours early on the horn, and I think you eventually across the Austin Radio Network. So we'll, uh, we'll see if Texas can figure out their defensive woes before they face the Horn Frogs. So... And that'll do it for this week's Sports Guys Talking Wrestling. You can follow Justin Smash Simmons on Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch at the Smash Simmons. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Stu Myrick. That's S T E W M Y R I C K. You can follow the show on Twitter at S G T W A T X. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Sports Guys Talking Wrestling. 
We are proud to be the official broadcast partner of the Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame, and we're proud to be part of the great lineup you hear every day. On the flagship station for the Texas Longhorns and your radio home in Austin for the Dallas Cowboys, we are The Horn. Catch us Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. Central on The Horn, or catch us anytime by going to hornfm.com, click on the On Air tab, or by subscribing to us on your favorite podcast platform. We thank you so much for giving us a little bit of your time tonight. For Justin, I'm Stu. We will see you at the matches. Goodbye and good night. Bang!